Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. I'm joined, as always, by Big Show. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you, sir? Not too bad. Um, the week's plugging right along, I guess. It could be faster, but I'm not going to wish it because then Saturday and Sunday will go by fast. So, yeah, this, keep this, my mouth day, shut and enjoy it. this day definitely drug by so far. But I am happy that we have decent temperatures today. Yes, yes, yes. Although I agree. somebody somebody broke my heart and said this weekend there may be a chance of snow. Go figure. No, we had that last week. Did we? Was it? it well, it was Friday when we had all that hail and stuff. Oh, well, I didn't us. get any hail here. I'm yeah, I'm lucky. Well, I guess yeah, it could Saturday. It could. Here, okay, but not I'm showing that it's actually Sunday night going into Monday because there is a 55% chance of snow on Monday. There you go. I don't care about that. Look at that. This podcast is full service. We give y'all the weather too. That's right. So last week and you can't we... hold it against us if we're wrong because that's what weather man, they're 50% right. There it's gonna be go. partly sunny on some of them days. So wherever you are in the world. It may rain. It may, it not. may not. I'm hedging my bets. <laughs> All right. Last week, we, we started talking about free agency. And, <clears throat> well, some more has happened since then. And, you know, since we are an AFC West kind of show, I want to uh, delve more into the AFC West. I want to start with your not-so-favorite team. The Denver Broncos. Now, they haven't really done nothing, have they? Well, that's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, they've got fullback Michael Burton. He re-signed a one-year deal. Uh, wide receiver Jordan Humphrey, who sounds familiar, but I don't think I've ever heard of him. Uh, Malcolm Roach on the defensive line. Now, he did sign a two-year deal worth eight mil. So he's only getting four million a year. It looks like a lot of these guys, Cody Burton, uh, Brandon Jones, PJ Locke, and Will Lutz, uh, ha have all signed with the Broncos. And that's it. So the message that I'm getting is Sean Payton is doing it his way. And I'm not going to lie to you, show. Um, I'm not impressed with Sean Payton. Well, we'll see. You have to give him a couple years. We'll see. Yeah, I, I'll give him a couple of years. I mean, give, give him as long as Denver's willing to give him, you know. Because what's their what's their draft position? I believe Eight. they pent. Oh, I thought it was 10, but I could be wrong. Somewhere in there. So they're liable to get one of these top quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Bo Nix, like a Bo Nix from Oregon. That'd be a good pick for them. That would be their kind of guy. So that could work. And, and, Sean Payton would have to show a tremendous amount of patience with that quarterback the first and possibly second year. Um, yeah, I mean, depending. I mean, he he made Drew Brees Drew Brees. So if he still's got that magic, then we'll see. Did he though? Of or course. More like Drew Brees helped make Sean Payton Sean Payton. No, nah, no. Nah. Drew Brees was a was a mediocre quarterback with the Chargers. Wow. Okay. Now I don't remember too much of his time in San Diego. Yeah, he uh, he he played at Purdue. He got drafted by the Chargers, and then he got injured, and then was trade uh traded in the off season. I do remember and that. Philip Philip Rivers. If took I'm over. correct, Marty Schottenheimer was the coach. He was upset because Drew Brees was his guy, and right. front office forced the trade. Correct. And then that following year, Marty was kicked out the door. Yeah. But um, that's how uh, Philip Rivers took over in San Diego. Okay. Now, if we move over to the Chargers, I almost said San Diego because we went back through memory lane, but it's the Los Angeles Chargers now, kids. They're not much better. They have a quarterback, Easton Stick. He re-signed his free agent deal. Um, Gus Edwards is... 
uh, their one of their running backs, one of their running backs. He signed a two year, six point five million dollar deal that's three and uh, three quarters guaranteed. They have a tight end, Will Disley. I haven't heard of this guy, uh, but it's a three year, fourteen million dollar deal that's ten million fully guaranteed. Uh, they got tight end Hayden Hurst. Uh, he signed a free agent deal. Um, they also got Bradley Bozeman, Puna Ford, Troy Dye, Denzel Perryman, who I didn't even know was still in the league. Uh, he signed a one-year deal with the Chargers. And uh, Aloy Gilman re-signed a two-year, $11 million deal. What do you think yeah, about they, the Chargers? I mean... The Edwards signing that's that's going to replace Eckler because Gus will Gus I think he played for the Ravens last year. I think uh, so. Disley and Hurst are decent tight ends. They're middle of the road tight ends. Um, Puna Ford's a good defensive lineman. Um, but you know we'll see. They're nothing. They're rebuilding. Yeah. Um... I mean, especially since they got rid of both of their starting wide receivers, their starting tight end, and their starting running back. Because uh, Keenan Keenan Allen went to the Brown, or to the Bears. Uh, Mike Williams actually signed with the Jets today. Mm -hmm. e Eckler, I don't remember where he went. I, th that's going to be a completely different looking offense. Well, yeah, they're going to be a run first offense. Which I'll be surprised. Uh, again, where does what? Can you look up real quick where Chargers draft? Um, let me uh, see if I can find that here. I bet you I can. Do, 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 do. Well, anyway, I think under un, under Harbaugh, they're going to be a run first orientated offense. I could see them possibly dealing Herbert at the draft to move up. And get a J.J. McCarthy who played at Michigan for Harbaugh or uh, grabbing their running back, Corum, Blake Corum, I think his name is. Um, I could see Harbaugh doing something like that. But they're definitely going to be a run first orientated offense. Yeah, it's coming up now. For the draft, let me see if I can find where the Chargers are on here. Where are they? Did I overlook them? I'm looking in the first round right now. Maybe they don't have a first round draft choice. Oh my. I think you're correct. Because the only Los Angeles it. I see is the Rams. Oh, there they are. They're up higher than I thought. They picked five. I'll see. Yeah, that's why I said I could see them getting J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback that was co or uh, Harbaugh's college quarterback that they just won the title with. Okay, so they are definitely trying to build it in uh, his image. Harbaugh. Oh yeah, that's what I said. I could definitely see them. I could be wrong. I mean, they'd be. I think they'd be stupid to trade away Herbert because Herbert is a decent quarterback. Um, but I could see them maybe trying to get a couple really high choices to build his run first. Because in the run first oriented offense, Herbert's going to be a wasted waste of talent. Yeah, I can see that. I can see. I I can see them pulling a Jimmy Johnson type deal. Um next season let herbert go get some draft picks and uh they could be on their way to building something i don't want to say similar to what he had with the niners but the direction that he was going anyway i don't think they'll be that magic again speaking of building a team in the coach's image the Vegas Raiders, um, they were another so-so in free agency kind of deal. Obviously, we talked about Gardner Minshew, and uh, they re-signed their uh, second-string running back, Amir Abdullah. 
and uh, he'll back up Zeus White. Uh, they also got running back Alexander Matt Madison. Uh, he signed a free agent deal. I'm not sure what team he was from. They uh, sure he, wasn't that the Vikings. Was it? I, I mean, so. I don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar with Madison at all. Yeah, he 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 was the backup to uh, Dalvin Cook, and then he left, and then Madison okay. was there. So yeah, Madison was trying to get his stats here for last year. But a bit of a doo 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 doo. Can I get season stats? No. No, I cannot. Well, it looks like he's been in the league for five years, all five with uh, Minnesota. Okay. Um, he he had to have been a backup majority of the time because he's only got 2,300 rushing yards for his career. Yeah, and it just shows and, here, signed a free agent deal. It doesn't even have big money attached to it, so... Um... I think he was looking more for a change of scenery than trying to get the bag. Yeah, he looked like just last year, I think his best game he ran for 81 yards. Mm. And now, touchdowns. Uh, he didn't have any rushing touchdowns last year. Ooh. But he but he did have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, that can't be right. That's receptions. One Two. He did have three receiving touchdowns. Okay. Yeah, I can see them uh, maybe, you know, putting a few plays in there for him to catch it out of the backfield, but that's probably about it. Uh, Zeus White is the man. Zamir White is going to get most of the touches, and I'm pretty sure Abdullah will still uh, spell him. And the Raiders also re signed Andre James, Adam Butler, and John Jenkins. Their big thing was getting uh, Christian Wilkins from Miami with that uh, $110 million contract. We will see. You and I talked about the Chargers off the air, about how it looks good on paper, but it's got to work out in real life. It looks good, him lined up right next to Max Crosby, but until I actually see it and see how it works, you know, I have reservations. Uh, you should be pleased as a Raiders fan with that with that signing. Wilkins I, I is probably so. the second best defensive tackle in the NFL behind Chris Jones. All right, I I, I get that. I would um, even put him above the dude that that plays defensive tackle with the Jets. Really? He, yeah. Um, Wilkins is a beast, and he's going to take some pressure off of Crosby. Crosby's going to have a better rushing the quarterback year this year, and that's saying something because he's a beast anyway. Hey, I'll take that. I'll, I'll definitely the one take that. thing that I'm surprised that y'all did not do is go get Justin Fields. Here's my thing about that, and I know a lot of people have mentioned that before. Remember, we've got the Bears' offensive coordinator. They know something that maybe nobody else knows. Plus, what? About that the, Justin that the off That the offensive coordinator for the Bears is now with the Raiders sucks at ass? No. He, he's got to know something for them not to pull the trigger on him. I don't know. Did they, did they not try? get along very well in Chicago? Is there something underlining to it? Also, Justin Fields went to the Steelers, correct? For a sixth round draft choice. A couple days after they got Russell Wilson. Yes. The question is, do you think Justin Fields will even see the field this season this year? at any point? No, I mean not necessarily. He's no. he, looking at he's it from Pittsburgh's standpoint, the they got a steal. Yeah, he's going to be what well, we yeah, for both quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. He's going to be the he as of right now. He's the Steelers' future choice. You know, he's gonna they're grooming him. 
Now, now I'm going to get back to the AFC West in a second. Why are you talking about the Steelers? Didn't they go to the playoffs last last year? No. They were like one and done, but they got in, right? No. Okay, so they did miss it, but they had a winning record. Correct. Okay, and that was with two garbage quarterbacks. Correct. So, yeah, I'm going to say that they got a steal for sure, and I think they're guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. Again, we're talking on paper, but why do you? Why would you say that? They would still have to beat Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Cleveland. I think this gives them a better chance. Really, Jackson, everybody's got a chance. Jackson, Burrow, Deshaun Watson. Those are the three starting quarterbacks on the other team. Russell I, Wilson I, I is the number you, I four. You're saying. I, I see where you. Russell is number you. four. I agree with you, but four. look at what happened to uh, Cincinnati last year. It can happen to Baltimore this coming year. It can happen to since it can happen to uh, Cleveland. I'm not sold. No, on Cleveland. it very it very well could, and you don't need to be sold on Cleveland. Deshaun Watson got injured. Burrow got injured. Okay, so let's say Jackson gets injured. Burrow and Watson are aren't going to get injured again no, like they did no. this year. So you still have to go through that three team parlay, whoever it is. And you know, uh, I believe the only two teams that made it out of that division was Cleveland and uh, Jackson. Baltimore. I mean, uh, Baltimore. Excuse me. Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Baltimore was the overall number one seed. Um. Cleveland, Cleveland was the team that got in, not Pittsburgh. I remember now, because Cleveland got in by the edge of their teeth, which I still don't understand why they let Joe Flacco go. I mean, he, he did good for him. I'd keep him, you know. I guess. Nope, I was wrong. They did make it. They played the Bills in the first game. Pittsburgh did. Yeah. Okay. Well. There, there, there it is. Then you can still get three teams from that division back in there. Yeah, it'll happen, yeah. but there's always a chance. Yeah, they had to have been the seventh seed. Yeah, because if they played uh, Buffalo, because Buffalo was the third seed, weren't they? No, nah, they were the number two seed. The Chiefs were the number three. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Chiefs and the Bills had the same record, but that's Bills right. beat the that's Chiefs, right. so they, they had to play Buffalo uh, and Buffalo. Correct, but and the reason is because Buffalo beat us in the regular season. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that that makes sense. Then. That makes sense. But going back to the AFC West, back to Kansas City, because I mean, I don't care what team you are from. This is the team to beat, Kansas City, and. Their free agents list, you know, obviously we talked about it. Marquise Brown, they got Hollywood Brown, so they got a receiver that can catch now. Tight end Irv Smith signed a one-year deal. Chris Jones, they re-signed. Derek Nottie re-signed. Um, yeah, the rest of them are all re-signings except for the punter. Yeah, Tranquil, Wharton, Sneed, Bush. Uh, the punter is Matt uh, Areza. Do you know... Where he punted from? for Buffalo. He Buffalo? punted for Buffalo. Mm -hmm. The reason why I asked that is because he signed for the league minimum. Yes. He has some off the field issues or did. And so he was released by Buffalo. Oh, uh, okay. So this is kind of like a you make know, it or break it kind of thing. We're going to give you a second chance type of thing. And since we, uh, Tommy Townsend decided to go somewhere else. Um, you know, he was he was the replacement for Tommy Townsend. I want I want to talk about that for a second. I'm in no way, shape, or form Chiefs fan, but let's just say I still had some of that athletic ability from my 20s that many decades ago, <clears throat> and I find myself playing for the Chiefs, and we just come off of a Super Bowl, back to back, no less. I'm doing everything I can to stay on that team. Because this team has a chance to doing something that nobody else has ever done, ever. But here's the thing, and this is where this is where I get in my conversations with my other buddies here. Mm -hmm. 
from a player standpoint, the number one priority is what you want to win a championship, right? Right. Number Which two is done. to get the number two is to get the bag. So he got two rings. So that that part of the equation has been crossed off. Now it was time to go get the bag, and that's what he did. Yeah. And I could kind of see where you're going with it's that. The same th it's the same thing that Tyreek Hill did. Tyreek Hill had his ring, went to get the bag. Yeah. That's, that's just how, that's, that's, that's just, um, especially when you're not a main character type of thing, mm -hmm. you know, you're not one of the main equations. Yeah. Tommy Townsend was a kick ass punter. But, you know, but he's not the face of the franchise. Right. Are, I mean, are the Chiefs fans devastated that he's not playing for us next year? No, we're not. So, you know, good good for you. You got your rings, go get your money. I ain't mad at you. Because, you know, he could take one kick, break his leg, and, you know, never play again. He's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. I tell you, from a fan, though, the one thing that I – that as I look at this free agent signing list for the Chiefs that I'm disappointed in is that we just re-signed all of our own players. Like, sometimes you need a little bit of difference because I remember in 2020, we re-signed all of our players. We went to the Super Bowl, we got our ass whooped by the Buccaneers. So, but the Hollywood so Brown signing, I'm pretty excited about. Is that the team playing it too safe? Or just familiarity, or what? What do you contribute that to? I contribute to playing smart. Um, because if you look at okay, Naughty, Derek Naughty, and Chris Jones, those are the two tackles. Okay, mm -hmm. so the fact that you was able to get Jones locked up, period. That's great. Naughty is there. W Wharton is a Wharton is the uh, you know uh, uh, rotational guy. Um, the other is guys, the that, standout player right there the, that I see. The the other guy that they don't have on this list, and I know that he did sign was Mike Pinnell. He's another defensive lineman. Um, Tranquil is the replacement for Willie Gay. Yeah. Uh, Deion Bush. He's 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 you know part of our cornerbacks. You know our safe our secondary. Uh, Winchester obviously long snapper. Sneed, you know. <laughs> I think we're just going to end up just keeping him on the franchise tag. I don't think that any other team is willing to give us what we want, which I believe is a second round draft choice at least. Mm -hmm. I think I think the Colts offered a third and we turned it down or we just were like, nah, we'd rather just pay him the 20 million and be done with it. Um, but, you know, this has the opportunity for Snead to play one year and then us give him the bag next year since we got Chris Jones. But next year, our starting center will be up. Our starting left or right guard will be up for for a redo. So, And that's where I was going to go with that. How long can you how long can you keep this going? As long as Patrick Mahomes keeps changing his contract for the team, <laughs> we can do it till he's tired of doing that. Because all they do is take that money off the books and give him as a signing bonus, which isn't counted against the cap. And, that's and I'm pretty sure he ain't mad about that. I think they cut him a $25 million check and that freed up $25 million off the cap. I, one of these days, I'm just going to sit down when I got just time to kill and just read up on caponomics just to see. It doesn't exist. You can circumvent. This, it doesn't that, exist. This. The cap doesn't exist. It's all on paper. Because so in in the NFL, okay, so in the NBA, uh, baseball, those are all guaranteed contracts. If LeBron mm -hmm. James signs a six year, hundred million dollar a year, he's gonna see every penny of that hundred million dollars. Yeah. Okay. In the NFL, so like We'll just use Chris Jones. He signed a five-year contract. Technically, he's he's signing five one-year contracts mm -hmm. instead of one five-year. 
So at the end of year three, the Chiefs have an out clause where they don't have to pay him the remainder of his salary. We can release him without getting hit against the cap. That's in in there. So when a team signs for an ungodly amount of money, they always backload it because on that year four or five of the contract, they're going to redo or they're going to trade, i.e. what the Broncos did with Russell Wilson, and make the other team. See what I'm saying? Well, So, so really tell me then because... about the signing bonuses on these contracts. How do they signing... count towards the cap? They don't. At all? At all ever? No. Okay. No, it's kind of, it's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like this is your this. It's basically Clark Hunt writing a check. the The signing bonus is that's that's your guaranteed money. The signing okay. bonus. So let, let's just say, and we don't know the ins and outs of Chris Jones's contract, but for simple terms, let's say it was a four year, one hundred million dollar contract at what is that, uh, twenty five million a year for four years, mm -hmm. and let's say his signing bonus was thirty million. So they gave him thirty million to put his name on the uh, paper. Mm -hmm. All right, that thirty million. It's they still owe him the one hundred million, but after year X, they can tear up the contract, redo it, and and it doesn't count. Not always. I just know. I just know how it is with Chris Jones' contract. Okay. Okay. So. He, let's say like in your scenario, $25 million a year. So that $25 million will be against the cap for that year. Mm -hmm. And the next year, $25 million will be against the cap. That signing bonus isn't against the cap. Okay. So if you, if you look at that, it says Chris Jones resigned a five year, $158.75 million contract with 101 million in guarantees. He actually signed a hundred million dollar contract. He's yeah. not going to see the other 58. It just looks good on paper. Gotcha. Because by the time they get to that good point. Good enough for him to say, hey, I'm the highest paid, dot, dot, dot. Exactly. Exactly. That makes sense. Exactly. Hey, before we shut it down, you and I both seen the trailer to The Acolyte. That's yes. the next Star Wars show. When is that dropping? June? I think it's June the 4th. First two episodes. Interesting. I'm not going to lie to you. When this was first announced, I was like, eh, eh, eh. After seeing the trailer, my interest is peaked. Why did you go, eh, eh, eh? Because Disney's track record with Star Wars. So far has been great. It Series wise. Is it is when Kathleen Kennedy is not involved. Which one was bad? I wasn't crazy about Obi-Wan. Oh, shut up. Obi-Wan was great. It was great, but I like the, Ty pa the, the Kai Patterson cut better. He's a fan that recut that whole series into a three-hour movie, and it was awesome. But he just recut everything that they that they already shot and made it a three hour movie. He didn't do anything different. Well, he left out a bunch of garbage that was in it. So, I you needed that for character build up for later shows, I guess. But there hasn't been a bad Star Wars series. You're being you're being over. No, nah, I'm not saying bad. I'm not saying the only thing. Bad. The only thing that I'm that I'm most excited and concerned about for this is if I'm not mistaken, this takes place in the old Republic. It does. So you won't have any of the characters that you know, or are used to. Right. So this is, this could lead into the, like we discussed before, the Darth Bane series is, you know, that type of stuff. Um, you know, all of that back in that, that created the Sith rule of two, you know, uh, a lot of Darth Malgus, you know, which was a big Sith. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. And, I, and I think I'm, I'm hoping that hard. you're right. I'm, I hope it does because that's what we need as far as Star Wars is concerned: a fresh shot in the arm 
and, and back to the eh, eh thing, you know, the Ray movie that's going to be coming out in a year or two. That's one reason why I'm like, eh, eh. I'm like, do we really need it? Do we really want the it? Mo the movies and the series, I separate them. Okay, but we are getting a good Star Wars movie next year. The Mandalorian Grogu. We don't know yet. We don't know if it's going to be good. Just because the series is good doesn't mean the movies are going to be good. And you could be right about that, but... So I, it, I separate them. I go strictly from the six to eight episode shows that we've been seeing. The movies, you know, I take them as they come. There have been, there've been quite a few. The, anything with the Ray Skywalker thing, I, I don't like the last episode seven, eight, nine. I wish they would just start over and redo those. But, you know, beggars can't be choosy. But I like the series. I definitely like the series. Uh, the series that have have come out. So um, yeah, I am. I'm super, super stoked, super excited. But and and did you notice that um, the chick that was fighting in the bar and that was uh, Trinity from the Matrix? Was it? Yeah, Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, the yeah Neo's girlfriend. Okay. Wow. See, I I, I did not notice that. I had, to, I had to look at it twice, and then I asked him, I said, man, is that the chick from The Matrix? And he's like, yep. Very, very interesting. I'm going to have to take a look at this here and see if there's any other notable characters in this show. But what I don't understand is the Alkalite, her, because she seemed to have a Jedi-colored uh, lightsaber. But you only see the red lightsaber flying through the air, cutting a couple trees, and a dark figure. You don't really see who it is. So the, the, they probably haven't showed yet, right? But who is the alkalite? Like who are they? Who are they getting ready to introduce from the old republic that is part of the dark side? That's what I'm excited to see. Because you know they're going to make you wait like we did for Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ahsoka. You know, yeah. it's going to be like episode six, and then we're going to want more, and the series is going to be over. That's how they do us, yeah. So uh, this is Amanda Sternberg, Daphne Keen, Jody Turner. Okay, Junus Su uh, Sutamal. I butchered that last name. I know who he is. He's the guy that's playing Chewbacca all the, all the time now. You're right. Ooh. Carrie Ann Moss is in here. Uh, Amy Sang, Margarita, uh, Levia, Charlie Bennett, Paul Bullion, Dean Charles Chapman. Uh, I'm getting hit with a lot of names of people that I am not familiar with. That's good. Rebecca Henderson and uh, Lee uh, Jung Jae. So, yeah, they are going with a lot of unknowns, which I don't have a problem with because, you know, Star Wars started off with a bunch of unknowns. We didn't know who Harrison Ford yes. was before he became Harrison Ford. Nope. We didn't know who Mark Hamill was before he became Mark Hamill. And the Joker. The voice of the Joker. The voice of the Joker, yes. All and the... he also played the... He played a bad guy kind of like the Joker in the Flash series. It's like mm, the toy you're right. toy maker or toy or something. It, it kind of reminded me of the Riddler, but it wasn't the Riddler in, in that yeah. deal. But he played that guy in, in that series as well. Yeah, and he's he's got a bunch of other movie credits to his name, but you know, we're just going by the ones that he does well known for. I can't well, you know, think I, of anything. I else. could throw out some more movies, but you'll be like, who? What? Uh Corvette Summer comes to mind. Yeah. I, I see that blank stare in your face. Of course you don't know that. Um, God, what was that? Now, now, I'm, now I'm drawing a blank for anything no, else. Like I've, I've seen him in like as cameos and shows like on Criminal Minds where he played a serial killer. I've seen that one. You see, know? Yeah, I, you got me there. I, I wasn't uh, familiar with that. But yeah, that, other than Star Wars, I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. Hey, well, that's going to be the way I'm in this show. I'm asking on you guys. Anybody on YouTube, leave me a comment. 
Let me know what else Mark Hamill's been in. Throw some movie titles out there. Help us out. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All right. You guys stay positive. Stay blessed. Big Show, take us out of here. Hey, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button so you can hear us when we uh, you get the little warning, let you know that we've got something posted. And uh, we'll see you next week. Well, Love each other. Warning. Tomorrow's not a promise. It's all right. <laughs> warning. Rick and Big Show are on. <laughs> That's right. Later, everybody. See you.